What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Jay Gutter, in the building, holding shit down, back at it again, about to get this Nobleese event in. So today we're going to go over the heroes, we're going to go over the soul gears, we are going to go over the set equipment, and I'm going to give you my opinion on them and let you know what the business is, so you can see where to spend your crystals, where not to, and such and such. So uh, anyways, let's jump right off into it. Um, first, we're going to do Sarah here. We're going to go over her. Now, we'll start off with her first skill. Well, her first skill didn't get any buff, so we're going to skip all skills that have not gotten buffed. Um, this one, I did think it got a buff just slightly in the damage portion. It uh, slashes so viciously that it cuts through the moon, inflicting 181.5% of damage on enemies and restores Sarah's uh, HP by 20% max HP creates a 80% chance of stun stunning branded enemies for two turns. So I like that it, it does have the HP leech. I think her third skill had that previously before this buff went through. And I mean the skill is decent but for a second skill she kind of needs a wider hitbox so I wasn't too excited when they decided to buff her that they didn't want to address the hitbox um because that straight line is just not is not adequate for her being limited now with her seal and everything so i wasn't too excited about that um they did add a little bit of more damage to it not much so this is not really a skill you're going to want to use too much anyways she's not really valuable for stunning because they have to be branded and she only brands every other turn so that's a little unfortunate but um, this right here is her bread and butter. So this is what the business is. Attacks enemies at 243.3%. Um, that is because I do have her soul gear. You can match match it. We'll get into that. That's just why my number looks a little messed up. I'm missing 7%. Um, attacks and inflicts an additional 32,000 defense ignore damage. Branded targets trigger double attack, which attacks them one more time inflicting 50% of skill damage so with this um, 32,000 to defense ignore damage that's basically it just ignores all their defense it's just a flat straight rate that has nothing to do with anything else they're gonna take 32,000 HP from a hero which does do a lot of damage so that right there does hurt it hurts a lot so that's what that is now they're saying that when they're branded here they're gonna do an additional 50 percent so you're gonna get 50 percent I think that her thing tops out at like 250 if I'm not mistaken so you're gonna be getting like an extra 125 percent of attack damage when they're branded so she's going to hit like a truck like she's gonna super hit like a truck that's 375 percent roughly might be a little bit more I might be missing a little bit more but it doesn't really matter anyways that's just roughly how much we're talking here now if you were able to put the VB setup on her you're talking an extra 30% to skill damage now you just reached into a whole different stratosphere so she's gonna really mess some people up she is not a game this skill right here if I'm not mistaken is the strongest skill in the game um, unless somebody can show me something else I don't think anything else because that flat damage also if they're branded you can hang that up that's that's some serious shit right there so I really like this skill um, I have tried her out in one day on guild raids was working pretty well since now you can just lock what skill you want to use and I just locked this one in right here and it was working pretty well and she was uh, she was giving them the business so it is what it is now this this right here I'm a little upset about let's go ahead and go over this at the beginning of odd number turns Sarah's branded all enemies in a six tile range for one turn each branded enemy in the map increases Sarah's movement by one up to three and critical damage by 3.4 percent up to 17 percent now with this skill right here I feel like me personally I feel like it got nerfed because I liked her branding every turn you know what I'm saying and it was a, it was two tiles away from her in all directions so I could live with that now they did add three more tiles of it in range but the problem with that though is it's only on odd turns like if they could have made the brand last for two turns 
it would have been awesome. And I know it would have been kind of roguish because then you could have spammed her third. But at the same point in time, new heroes are going to be coming and going. So for them to stay competitive for, you know, the life cycle of this game, they need to be a little bit broken because new heroes, we can see the meta has been going down to where they're just giving heroes these retarded ass hitboxes, retarded range. So they're just like hitting everybody. They're just molly whopping the shit out of everybody. So for them not to give her that type of justice, I don't know. I mean, as of right now, she still hits hard as shit as far as paper heroes go, but I don't know how long she'll last into the situation. But as far as adding this uh, critical damage by 3.4% up to 17, that's pretty OP. Now, I don't know if it's just a glitch or what's the situation here, because it says on each branded enemy. But I have noticed that when I run her in BOH, I'll notice that she's branding her own teammates. Now, I don't know if that is, you know, a glitch they got going on or if that's the way that it's intended and it's bad interpretation. If it does, if you're allowed to brand your, your team to, then that's awesome on most maps because you're already going to get that extra 17% to critical damage. And you're going to get the three movement also straight off the bat because she's all clustered with everybody else. I had her running all over the place today. So I'm really, you know, I mean, I'll settle for it. As far as passives goes, it's a pretty solid passive. Um, not to judge it by its old one. So that's what the situation. Now, her uh, awaken skill here is very unfortunate. Because when I first seen the instant death, I was like, oh, hell yeah. Because I called it out because she is a reaper. So I was like, yeah, she's going to get instant death all day. But when I seen this cooldown time, four turns, that's ridiculous. Now, with the four turns, that means that she cannot use it until turn five. Now, if you're BOHing, where is five turns even going to come in handy at? You're, you're not going to really be living long enough to see that. It's going to be very rare occasions, and she is not a tanky hero to where she's going to be taking hits and even be able to survive to that point. So then we got to look at, all right, well, maybe they made it for the Tower of Dawn. Hell. But the problem with the Tower of Dawn Hell is almost every boss has the instant death immunity. So what's the purpose of this unless they start making some bosses to where you can instant death kill or something? But, I mean, we got zero for that. He He's good to go on turn three. With the Pioneer set, he's good to go on turn two. Now, to fix this, I think that they should have lowered the damage multiplier because it's 845.4% of attack. It is a pretty strong attack. Um, but the instant death is pretty much pointless, you know? So, I mean, if you're going to use it in Tower, in Tower of Dawn, it'll still work on turn five. If you can hit the boss with that, it's still going to work. He ain't going to die, but at least it's something. So I'm not happy about that. I'm, we still have time. So I'm hoping, like I've sent some complaints about it. Hopefully some other people have too, to where the cooldown time is just too ridiculous. Bring down that damage multiplier. Let us get it earlier. Like we could let zero have it on turn two. You know, with the Pioneer set, let her have it on turn three. I'll settle for that. You know, drop down his damage multiplier by a, a few hundred or whatever you got to do to make it happen. So that's as far as her skills go. Now, as far as her awakening stats over here, they did a pretty good job. She's got decent HP. She, her MP is extremely low, but you can fix that with Ruin, so that's not a big deal. Her attack is high as shit. She's got a, a 19k attack which is pretty damn impressive um her defense is good her dodge is pretty damn high her crit rate is amazing mastery is is pretty damn good so and she's a fast growth rate so i mean you, there's no complaints there i was running her in boh and i built her like this so since she still has that high base dodge eh, why not and with her passive throw this ghost step on her and i was running her in slot four and she was literally able to run all the way to the end of the other map. It was just crazy. I don't know. I did post a video on it the other day. Um, so it's pretty awesome. So all in all, she's a pretty damn good hero. Um, as far as BOH is concerned, I, I consider her a tier one hero because she hits like a truck. There is just no getting around that. She's a tier one hero as of right now. And guild raids... That's still yet to be determined because the big thing that, that hinders her is her co-op skill. So her co-op skill over here, her first skill there, you see it's just an across pattern. 
So she's either got to be in a direct path. So I have found a few. There's only two days that where she can work is on Saturday. I've used her on Saturday. She worked pretty damn well. Um, and then there's Wednesday. Um, I didn't try to plug her in on Wednesday. Because mine's just such a low level right now. She doesn't really have a lot of HP for me to just be throwing around places. Um, she's currently at a 25, which is sad. So anyways, that pretty much covers it for her. Oh, we got to go over her soul gear. So her soul gear here. Now, a lot of people might be wondering, like, is it worth buying or is it not? You know, what's the situation? If you're going to purchase it, it's pretty much just for this. So what this does right here at a level 10, which it got super nerfed because this was some straight up bullshit. Let's read it first. Increases skill damage by 14.8% and an additional defense ignore damage by 7,000. Now previously, where this thing was at, when I originally got it and purchased it, it was at, it added 25% to skill damage, which was freaking amazing. That was the main reason why I bought it. Now, there is no way in hell you're gonna tell me that an extra 10% to skill damage is not gonna be better than that 7K flat HP no freaking way 10% would do way more than that so I'm not too happy about that so they pretty much nerfed it but I think that they just did that probably because her damage multipliers are already retarded and on a, a whole different level so this would be basically why you would be purchasing that now do I feel like it's a must and this one right here they did change this one to where it increases stun chance by 10% and skill effect range by one so when it hits it's gonna have like a five it's gonna have that five box instead of hitting for the four so that extends the range I think it makes the range uh, two or five I mean I don't even know I don't even have her uh, I don't have it maxed out so I think that that extends the range to where you can hit from five boxes away not sure on that don't quote me on it because I don't got it yet but anyways um, her soul gear I don't feel like it's a make or a break as far as soul gears go like I feel like you can live without it I don't feel like it's a super priority it's not gonna like super make or break her um, I do like how you can mitch match it because this one increases her skill damage by 19.8 percent that's her regular soul gear and look at this one this one gives you a 14.8 and this is the one that you have to pay money for that's just ridiculous um, don't like that not too happy about it if I didn't already previously purchase it I probably wouldn't even purchase this one like I wouldn't even bother with it like that extra 14 percent to skill damage eh, I guess it will kind of make make or break a hero but we'll see and I know that they said that they don't have any nightmare dungeon coming for the the nobles heroes but I hope that they at least add the hero mark now if they're gonna add marks they have to do it before this events over then they're not allowed to touch the heroes anymore so I'm hoping that they come to their senses and at least add some hero marks because if they don't, it's going to really hinder these characters going forward. So anyways, uh, the other person who got buffed, now we're going to talk about Muzaka too, but they didn't really do much to him. So we're not going to really go over his skill sets or anything. But uh, next up is Frank the motherfucking tank. Boy, let me tell you, Frank is the new gold standards to buffing heroes. Like if you get Franked, that's on some next level shit. They totally remade Frank. Freaking love it. Think they did an outstanding job. Um, this is how I was running them in BOH. Um, I like running the the unprecedented set because you can stack two charges when it when it when it uh, activates when it proxies. So it's pretty cool. Anyways, let's go over his skills and see what the business is. All right. Um, let's start off with this passive because his, his skills get a little crazy. Frankenstein, the Thralls of the Dark Spear, receives as much DOT damage as 14% of attack at the beginning of his turn. If one or more stacks of the erosion buff is cast on him, each erosion stack increases his critical damage by 7.2% and defense by 1,020, the erosion buff stack up to three times. Now, his is saying... 7.2% because I do have his soul gear. So we'll get into that. So just ignore that number. I think it's like 5. It's like 5% regularly. So if you could go ahead with the soul gear, 
you're going to already get a charge. So once you get that charge at the beginning of the turn, you're already getting an extra 7.2 to critical damage. And if you hit somebody after that, and like let's say you use your second skill and you get like a double stack, all right, now you're going to get the 14.4. So it goes all the way up to 20, 21.6, which is pretty damn impressive as far as critical damage goes. But it does take a minute to get those up there. Um, you can't you can't have all three on the first go, but on the second go, you're good to go. Um, increasing his defense by that much per stack is pretty pretty awesome because you have a potential of getting 3,060 defense. So he's pretty he's pretty decent. He is pretty damn decent. So I love this new passive that they gave him. It's a lot like Aaron's, the way that the charges work. So pretty much the same concept as her soul gear with the charges the way that it works so it's pretty damn solid pretty damn solid so his next one up here which i was like super very impressed with uh is his last one now the thing that i would like to point out which is freaking awesome and amazing is like in the tower of dawn i know that i've had trouble like on this tower of dawn hill there's not many people who have henry soul gear to attend because henry has the five range charge now there's not many people who have that so getting a mercenary for that is kind of hard sometimes but now we have Frank with the five range charge so now it's we're good in the hood because now you could just send Frank over there you don't even have to use a Henry mercenary so it's pretty I feel kind of bad for Henry because the one thing that he was good at is now obsolete we don't even need him for that anymore so he's going to the back burner so hopefully he gets franked himself because that's a damn shame the way that they have done him throughout the history of time so I would like to point that out is five range there okay and charges at enemies with this dark spell spear held in front attacking at 337.2 of attack and moves to the farthest tile one or more erosion stacks makes this skill ignore 7,000 defense for all enemies within its range two or more stacks decreases the character's incoming damage by 15% for two turns. So if you hit more than one people, then you're going to get a reduce in damage by 15% for two turns, which is pretty awesome. So it's even helping them even more be a more reliable tank. Now, this 7k to defense ignore is freaking drastic. This makes this skill like not only does he have a retarded high damage multiplier, which I think I'm missing something on this one too, so it's not maxed out. Uh, we'll we'll look at that once we get to the soul gear and see what we're missing. I think it was at 230. I think it's at 230 regularly. I don't know. But anyways, take any hero that you have, gear them up, and then see what their defense is, and then drop their defense 7, 7k, and then go into battle and see what the difference is. This thing shreds. Like, I'm one-shotting souls on BOH with Frank, and they're rock type, so he's taking a negative 30%. For, for attacking them. It's just insane how much damage that this skill is doing. Now the hitbox, I feel like they should have gave him the Celeste hitbox. It would have been hilarious. He would have been like super broken. Like you made Soul. Why not make Frank like that too? Give him the same hitbox. Extend that one tile out each range. Now if his other Soul Gear would have did that, I'd died laughing. Because Frank would have went instantly to probably the most brokenest hero. Well, he Soul is still ridiculous with his two turn. Um disarm but frank would be ridiculous because he wouldn't have to wait for his to take some damage just straight off the back he's just gonna molly -wop the shit out of you so pretty impressed with the skill and the changes that they did his second skill showers enemies with numerous dark arrows inflicting damage at 185.4 percent of attack and casting a debuff that creates an 80 percent chance of decreasing their healing effect by 50 percent for three turns a also adds one erosion stack to Frankenstein. The erosion buffs last up to three turns and stacks up to three times. If one or more erosion stack increases final skill power by 25%. So straight off the back, if you have a soul gear, you're already going to have that one charge and that will jump this up 25%, which is going to give you a 205.4% damage multiplier, which is pretty fucking imp impressive like there's no getting around it actually that's 210 that's yeah that's 210.4 so that's that's just impressive for that to be his second skill that's a hell of a lot of damage 
So, and it's got a decent range. I wish they would have gave him the same range as his first one. Would have been a lot better, but I will take it. For a second skill, that's pretty impressive. That's definitely one of the highest in the games. All right. His uh, first skill here, this is like the Tower of Dawn special skill. Throws a dark energy at enemies inflicting damage at 165% of attack with a 50% chance of casting decreased healing effect on them for three turns. Also adds one erosion stack to Frankenstein. The erosions, you know, they stack up three times. Whatever. So this skill right here they don't do a good job describing it but this is like a straight up anti-heal skill so if you get hit with this you ain't healing period for three turns unless you have like an army set or if celeste is by you and can debuff you so this skill right here is pretty much just for the tower of dawn now i've used it in battle of honor this week when i ran into some Nox and i didn't have nobody to disarm them and i hit them with this skill and i was like oh thank the lord that i had that up because this thing right here is the business. So it was doing the damn thing. So that's pretty much all the skill is for. So that's pretty impressive. So now his awakening skill. I'm really liking this hitbox. Loving the range. This same hitbox is what I feel like they should have gave to his third. Which would have been freaking hilarious. Uh, releases a power of the noblest contracts. Attacking enemies at 436.8 percent of attack if two or more erosion stacks ignores enemies defense by 3800 if three or more erosion stacks increases Frankenstein's attack by 40 percent and decreases incoming damage by 15 percent for three turns so that's just crazy so you have the potential to get the 15 percent from his passive was it his passive skill that was given that no, it was his third skill. So if you do his third skill and then do this one, you have the potential of getting like fucking 30% uh, damage reduction, which is pretty cool. Be kind of hard to get that. Now, this cool, this skill does have a three-turn cooldown. So with the Pioneer set, you'll be able to use it turn three, which is pretty impressive. And I've noticed with Frank, it's not really a big issue to get him to live until turn three. So I'm liking this Awakened skill. See, this one is actually pretty damn awesome. So... You see where his damage multiplier is for that. So Sierra, Sarah's needs to drop. They need to drop hers down low like that one. I'll settle for a three-turn cooldown. Like, I, I can live with that. So if they want to drop it down and do the damn thing, do the damn thing. Now, let's go over his soul gear. Now, as far as his soul gear goes, you can mismatch him. Let's see what this one does. Okay, this one is... This is primarily just for the Tower of Dawn. For you're gonna have those bosses who heal a retarded amount, and you gotta you gotta debuff that. Now there is other heroes to where you can do combinations to where they're gonna do it. You know they take a certain percentage, somebody else takes a certain percentage, and then he's not going to heal. But for this thing, the last three turns, it's just pretty damn convenient. So this Soul Gear right here adds the decreasing healing effect by 20%. So that's going to jump him up to a 70% to them not healing at all for three turns, which is, so this is primarily just for the Tower of Dawn purposes. Now you can use it in BOH. Um, I could see it maybe coming in handy when, when Belle gets awakened, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you could just, you could just hit her with this 70% chance. I like the mods. So, there's probably going to be applications in the future for it, but as of right now, I only see it as a Tower of Dawn. Now, his regular soul gear adds to his third skill, so I got this one missing 7% off of this one. So, yeah, I'm missing 7% from his total damage multiplier. I don't know what the hell he was at. So, anyways, this one right here is a must. So if you plan on using Frank, period, you, you have to get this soul gear to even make him usable to where if you like to BOH. Now, in BOH, he does have some applications to where he's going to be nice. So he's somebody you can send over there ASAP and, you know, launch him across the map and get him in people's faces. Throw a throw an iron, a iron fist over there and... Um, yeah, let him counter some people and fuck some people up. So this one increases erosion critical damage bonus by an additional 2%. Additional effects increases the erosion stacks by 1 at the beginning of each turn. So this is adding 2% to his critical damage, which is eh, 
I mean, we'll take anything. But that erosion stack at the beginning of the turn is freaking awesome because then straight off the back, using his third skill, you are going to ignore their defense by 7k, which he's going to really fuck some people up with that high-ass damage multiplier also. So all in all, I think that it's definitely worth it. This would be a priority. If I could only pick one, and it depends on where... Like, it depends on where I'm at. Like, if I if I slowly just like to do Battle of Honor, which I do, I would get this one. Even if you like to do Guild Raids, there's going to be some days to where you can slide Frank in and he's going to be awesome. So this one has multiple purposes. And for the Tower of Dawn for his anti-heal getting up to a 70%, which will come in handy in BOH in the future. So I think that out of everybody's soul gear this one is by far the best like not even a, not even a competition now we haven't seen risals and we haven't seen rask yet so i can't really testify to that but as of right now out of these three he has the best now his regular soul gear adds to his second skill which you can increase his his damage uh by 14.5 percent which is pretty awesome and the healing reduction chance by 20 percent so if you throw this upon him with that 14.5, he's getting up to like 225-ish, roughly, as far as his damage multiplier on his second skill. So that's pretty fucking high, and it's got a decent hitbox. So all in all, Frank Frank is a fucking, I give them like a fucking A-plus on this man. They just represented to take such a shitty character and make him like this. I'm hoping to God that they do the same thing to Muang. Because I've been very depressed about my dude. So hopefully that'll be coming soon. He'll get Frank. So Frank, they just did an awesome job on him. So good job, Nexon. His HP is good. MP is good. His attack is... Uh, you might as well round it off to 19k. It's close enough. So that's good. His defense is... Eh, it's a little bit on the low side, but... He can live. You can build him to live. So he, he, I've noticed that he still takes a hit. Um, his dodge is decent. His crit rate's good. His mastery sucks. So he's got the four movement. So you can't complain about that. So all in all, freaking awesome hero. Do I feel like he's a must-have hero? You know, is he like super game changing? No, he's not super game changing. He's just he's a really good hero. If you like him, freaking get him. And his costume looks pretty fucking cool over here. You fucking make him go out there looking like a fucking beast. So he goes out there looking like a savage. Uh, I'll probably get that before the event's over. So anyways, all in all, good job on Frank. Next person is Muzaka. They didn't do much to him, so we're not going to really go over his skills or anything. The only thing that they did do for him is on his third skill here. Now, Muzaka got the fucking shaft. I have no idea why they remade all these other characters and they gave they chose to give him this fucking bullshit right here. Um, lets out a paralyzing shout, hitting enemies in the range at 217.5% of attack with a 75% chance of immobilizing them for two turns. And this is what they added. And inflicts an additional 28,500 damage that ignores defense so that's the only buff that they gave him was ignore the defense by that 28 fucking thousand five hundred they should have made that a lot bigger like maybe throw us like a fifty thousand or something give us something good so this was the only buff that he got which is freaking ridiculous wasn't excited about that at all now so we're not going to go over that now what we're going to talk about here is now what is his purpose as a tank nowadays. Now, Muzaka is at a disadvantage just for the simple fact that he has no type of negative damage uh, percentage for him to be a tank. So if you just want him to tank it out, now he does have, um, he does have this to where he heals himself. And I do have the soul gear, but it's not, it's not upgraded and it adds like an extra, like, 25 like 20 percent to his damage multiplier around there and he does heal um this right here they should have extended it a range made it go two boxes to make it more more subjectable to be in a tank because without that passive being able to really heal him he's not really ideal for a tank um i did forget about this now his awakened skill is fucking awesome what the pioneer said that's how i was running him turn two you can use this skill 
freaking love to be able to throw. Now this this square hitbox is always known as the Muzaka hitbox. That's just what we refer to it as in the game. You you talk about the Muzaka hitbox, people know what the business is. Now for you to be able to throw the Muzaka hitbox three tiles in front of you is just freaking ridiculous and awesome. The skill I've noticed is pretty weak. It doesn't do much damage, but it still is just awesome. You can do it. Now releases his werewolf powers inflicting damage at 338.8% of damage that ignores its target's defense by 4,000. If a target's HP is higher than Muzaka's, this skill's final power increases by 30%. If it is lowered, it increases the target's incoming critical damage by 10% for two turns. So, love his, love his Awakened skill. One of, one of the better ones I've seen in the game. Um, but anyways, back to his stats over here. Now, as far as tanks go, he does have the highest base attack. So I think that what Muzaka is more ideal for nowadays, if you like him as a character, to run him as a DPS tank. So he's just like Valkyrie. You know, you throw the Angel's Knight set up on him and you build him high crit, highest possible attack. You know, he has a high base defense, so he's still going to always have good defense. He has, he I think he has one of the highest in the games. And his HP is great one of the highest in the games too as far as the tanks go so his hp is good you build him dps throw a beast rain on him you know throw a dasso throw an angel's knight on him throw the pioneer set up on him and he shouldn't have no crit problems but i would i would throw a slime king because with the ruins and all attack ruins he's good to go like that right there is the ideal build for him dps tank so that's what his purpose is now so if you want to get him and you plan on running him just to be a tank don't even do it there's way better tanks out there chris you know puts them in the water for as far as being a tank goes now his soul gear if you do like muzaka and he is good because even with the uprising of attack type characters you know you send him in there you ain't got to worry about the slime king now this is one of the better soul gears also so i put this in second place as importance of if you're going to get more than one now if you want to use muzaka period you have to get this soul gear right here so if you like him as a character gotta get it increase his skill damage by 14.6 percent and skill effect range by one tile so that's what gave him that big old muzaka hitbox uh on his third skill was this soul gear right here so without that you're not going to really have it um this one right here increases skill damage by 24.5 percent that's on his passive it's at like 106 106 ish right now so that's pretty decent his regular ones, what does this do? Oh, it increases his recovery by 3.2. Oh, yeah, that's not actually not too damn bad. Might want to go for that if you're trying to make him tank tank it. But uh, still doesn't change the fact he's a DPS tank. With his healing powers, it, it will allow him to stay alive a little bit longer. So I'm liking him as a hero. So all in all, pretty damn solid character. Uh, as of right now, he's in third place. Hopefully, we will see a buff, or maybe he's going to get an amazing mark. So, I'm hoping to God we don't get shafted on the marks on them. If they do, I'm going to be pissed the hell off, and everybody in this game is going to be pissed off because they spent money on him. So, anyways, that does it for the heroes right there. And we went over to Soul Gear. Now, let's go over the equipment. Um, yeah, I think I got them all. We're just going to go over the SS sets because I don't think that it's, uh, I don't think that it really matters to go over the other ones. Um, so we'll just go over the equipments for right now. So this one's pretty awesome. I like the buff that they gave this. So this one right here decreases, uh, 1200 defense from enemies in one tile range around its wear. I don't know what that DOT is all about. Don't ask. So, the the third skill effect increases its wear's critical damage by fifteen percent for two turns if there are one or more enemies in a one tile range. So, as long as you have at least one person around you, you're getting fifteen percent critical damage, and then not only that, you're dropping their defense by twelve hundred. So, as far as guild raids go. This is an amazing guild raid set. Um, this could also be good in, in BOH also. 
if you have a hybrid DPS tank, like when Valkyrie gets awakened or if you're running Muzaka, this would be an awesome set to have up on them because, you know, they can take that hit and have people close to them. And so you have to have high crit rate to get that critical damage, that 15% for it to even activate. So all in all, pretty damn solid buff. I like that set. So they took that. It was completely useless. Now it's now it's it was like Magic Girl. I think before it gave like a little tiny bit of HP, and it gave something else. I don't know. It was freaking terrible. I'm a little pissed off because I originally had like freaking five of these sets, but over time, I slowly just started to. Um, unfortunately, I just started freaking disassembling them for potions because I had them upgraded at a point in time, and I just never seen it getting a buff because it was from the event so i didn't think they were going to buff any of them so that was my stupidity but i mean it is what it is at the end of the day uh this one got an amazing buff now this one right here intelligent war i was i like i've been holding on to this thing i now only got one set but i've been holding on to this thing since the beginning the first ever event i got this thing and it was freaking worthless because it was before the stipulations was if your hp falls below 40% well, you're not really going to need all this if it's dropping below 40%. It's, it's pretty much worthless. Now, this one is doing a damn thing now because it activates if your uh, HP is 85% or above, which is great because you really just need it for turn one to really get yourself in place. Now, this increases directional strategy power by 9%, which is pretty damn solid. Now, to give you an idea of what this strategy power by 9% does... Like, okay, you know how the the time for your shot gives you, um, it's pretty much what it does is it's in the middle between time for your shot, it's, it's stronger than that, but it's not nearly as strong as the Predator. So it's like right off in the middle right there. So that'll give you an idea of the strength of what that 9% will do for you. And increases movement by two. So to have a two star set that increases movement by two in the Tower of Dawn, this is going to be like an MVP set, especially for the people who don't have a lot of sets. And it opens up the door because you can throw the four star movement set too. And now you got three movements. So you pretty much almost have a, a ghost step effect just off these two sets. So all in all, fucking badass fucking buff. Would I go out and get this? I think you should at least own one. Make your life a hell of a lot easier. So I'd definitely get one. Um, next up is the APB set. This set right here, I believe is, is, as you can tell, I got, I got a couple that are, that I've been holding on. I used to have four, but I converted them over time just to make two strong sets, uh, unfortunately. But anyways, as far as the revival set goes, this one is awesome because you revive with 30%. Now I know 30% might not seem like a lot at this time, but like I've had plenty of times this week to where soul had got revived with his 30%. Somebody else came up and hit him because he has so much damage reduction because of his passive. Um, he was able, because he's got like negative 40%, he was able to take a hit and live with that 30%. So there's going to be times to where this 30% of HP is going to save your ass. So all in all, me personally, I think it's the best revive, revival set because you can put it on anybody. VB set is definitely a hell of a lot stronger because it's stronger than the Beast Rain, but you revive with 5%. That's the problem that I have with this one. You revive with 5%, so you gotta add like 5.5% to HP regen for them not to die from terrain damage. So that's what you need to do, which is not too bad nowadays because you can get it on ruins, but I don't really like this one if I had to pick. This one's way better, but the, but the VB set is definitely a hell of a lot better on attack type characters only, so that's definitely the way to go. I've uh, been waiting trying to get one uh got those hammers saved up so your boy's been saving up just waiting for the day i get one so um that does it for that one so this next set got a huge freaking buff where is it at here oh it's right over here in my inventory okay so this one got a huge buff now it still increases all allies defense by 1100 um while in the dungeon so this and okay, let's go over to the other one. Increases attack by 2,500 for all allies within the two tile range. Well, two tiles around the wear. So this one right here, it was at 1,800. So they added seven 700 attack, which is pretty fucking impressive because now it gives more than the Wisdom of the East set. So 
this one right here I do like to run in guild raids if you're a big guild raids fan this is a must-have set because there's a lot of times where the boss doesn't really crit hit too much to where that damage reduction you're getting from running the E set is not doing as much as this 1100 to defense helps out a hell of a lot more to all of your people and the Tower of Dawn this set is like money I bring this thing with me everywhere in the Tower of Dawn I bring it with me every guild raid um, this set is where it's at and now that they added even more attack it's even more of an incentive so if you have to pick a set that you're wanting to use your ticket if you're still holding on to it because you got 99 days from when you first got it and you're like huh, oh, which set should I get if you like the BOH get the APB set it's not even a competition and if you like the guild raids then this is gonna be this commander of the Central Knights is like a must get like go ahead and get you one of these so the sets fucking amazing Next up, we have, uh, where is it at? There it is. Next up, we have this set, which I'm a little depressed about because I thought that they were going to do it a lot more justice. Now, this one activates when wearer's HP is at least 75%, which is unfortunate because they should take the stipulation off completely. Take it off completely, and then then it will be like worth, worth using. Now, I ran it, and I tested it out with like Nox, he had extremely high you know crit rate because you got a bow and you got a ring and um i threw the green ranger with them i threw the the iron fist with them and i had his counter rate up to 100 percent with running a beast rain and he was he was taking hits like it wasn't shit because of all the critical damage reduction because this one's adding the the 20 percent which is pretty good and now the buff that they gave it is increases uh the strategy power advantage uh strategic advantage power by 10 percent now basically what that is is they're telling you that uh like if you're a paper hero and you attack a rock hero you know i think the i think the damage multiplier for doing that it might, it's like 20 or 30 percent something like that i think it's 20 percent so let's say it's 20 percent so when you attack them since you're attacking the opposite element you know your paper you're attacking rock now it's going to jump it up to a 30 percent so you're getting that extra 10%, but it only works towards the opposite thing like that. So that's kind of that's kind of lame. They should they could have made that 20% and then we would have been talking. So I mean, eh, it, it's a decent set, but it's not game breaking now. It won't be good in guild raids because it don't really it don't really do anything. That 10% is not going to outrank, you know, uh the future set or an AK set or an unprecedented set it's just not gonna outrank it so I don't really see no application for this so don't even waste your time with it if you get it hold on to it I guess maybe there will come a day to where it'll shine or whatever but uh anyways that about does it for you uh, that's all I gotta say about the nobles event now make sure that y'all save up to get the Lord costume now what they did for those of you who do not know is they're doing Rizal and they're doing Rask after two weeks of this event being out then they're gonna drop those heroes they're gonna drop their soul gears probably buff them too so the Lord costume that they're offering right now is hold on here let me see here uh, the Lord costume that they're offering right now is not the awesome one but you should still get this one so if you ever want to complete all of your Lord costumes you gotta get it so this one right here is the one that people really really want because hero MP recovery by three that is freaking awesome in the Tower of Dawn and you get an increase in attack by 285 don't miss out on this costume this one right here is the shit his other one that's up for sale right now is this one which is still pretty damn good getting an extra 24 to MP is fucking awesome HP is always appreciated so y'all definitely make sure that you get that um I think that pretty much does it. So anyways, it's your boy, Jake Gutter, in the building. Holla at your boy.